Thank you for joining us today, and we are very honored to have you here to share some insights regarding the machine tool industry. So, shall we start with your presentation? Yeah, let's go ahead and start. Thank you for inviting me. So, uh, I want to share with everyone uh, what has been happening in world machine tool consumption. Uh, and first, we're going to look at uh, global consumption and production. And consumption is the blue line on the chart, and production is the orange line. And in 2019, global machine tool consumption uh, was just over $80 billion, uh, $82 billion. Uh, this was the lowest level of global machine tool consumption since 2010. And in 2011, we had a peak in global machine tool consumption at just over $108 billion. So we've had a $28 billion decline in global machine tool consumption uh, since 2011. And China accounted for $21 billion or 75% of the decline uh, since 2011. Now in this next slide, we can look at the share of global machine tool consumption by uh, each of the 60 countries that we track in our annual survey. And I've uh, highlighted here the five countries that have the largest global share of machine tool consumption in 2019. And we can see that there are five countries currently that have more than 5% of the world's uh, machine tool consumption, each one of them has more than 5%. And, and we see that China is at the top. It became the uh, largest consumer of machine tools uh, back in 2001. And in 2019, China accounted for about 27% of global machine tool consumption, but this is down from nearly 41% uh, in 2011. 
And then we see the U.S. is in second place at 12% of the global total, but it's had its highest share of machine tool consumption since 2001. Uh, and given the state of relations uh, between the U.S. and China and the shifts in the global supply chain due to the pandemic, it's possible that we could see U.S. Uh, machine tool consumption account for somewhere between 15 and 20 percent of global machine tool consumption uh, over the next five to seven years. And overall, the uh, share of global machine tool consumption appears to be shifting towards North America and Europe. We see that Germany is starting to pick up its share of global machine tool consumption, as well as Italy has been since the Great Recession uh, and the financial crisis in 2008 and 9. And then we also see uh, other European countries picking up, and we also see Mexico is near its highest share of global machine tool consumption ever. And so we'll talk of the supply chain shifts increased uh, due to the pandemic, what we see from this data of share of global machine tool consumption that there was already a shift uh, taking place in the machine tool uh, consumption patterns in the supply chains around the world as far back as 2011. And it's really the pandemic is just accelerating uh, that shift. Now, one of the things uh, I like to look at are leading indicators for uh, machine tool consumption. And generally, there are three leading indicators that I track uh, on a regular basis and fairly closely. And those are the money supply, so how much money is in the economy in each country, uh, the capacity utilization of equipment and manufacturing uh, capability in that country and what is the uh, rate of change in industrial production. And then I like to compare that with machine tool consumption. Now, not all of these data points can be found for every country, but where they are, uh, I correlate them with machine tool consumption and they tend to lead machine tool consumption uh, pretty consistently. And here we're looking at the rate of change in China's machine tool consumption, how fast it is growing or contracting, which is the blue line. And then the various leading indicators are the orange lines. And we can see that China's machine tool consumption grew from 1999 to 2011, almost every single year. Uh, and that continuous stretch of growth coincided with the U.S. lowering its interest rates to boost its economy after the dot-com bubble and after the financial crisis in 2008. Now, after that uh, financial crisis, China decelerated the growth in its money supply. That's the light, the lightest orange line on there. And the rate of growth uh, began to slow down in the money supply. And that's had a significant impact uh, on machine tool consumption in China. In fact, since 2011, uh, we can see that machine tool consumption in China only grew in two years, and those two years had much lower growth rates uh, than what we saw from 1999 to 2011. Then we can look at the same sort set of leading indicators for the U.S. And again, here, machine tool consumption is the blue line, and the various leading indicators uh, are the orange lines. And we can see that U.S. machine tool consumption is going to contract in 2020, and this likely was going to happen even without the pandemic. Um, as a result of the pandemic, the U.S. has dramatically accelerated its growth in the money supply. Note the light orange line on the far right there uh, going up very sharply, indicating very, very rapid growth in the money supply in the United States. That typically leads to growth in machine tool consumption although it does take 12 to 24 months typically for that to happen. However, we're, it's, uh, we're unsure at this point whether uh, this rapid increase in the money supply is gonna lead to a big increase in machine tool consumption like it did after the fi financial crisis uh, because there are so many other headwinds to the economies around the world right now. The rates of change in industrial production and capacity utilization, uh, we need to see those bottom out, which they are about to do. They're very close to bottoming out and to start uh, contracting at a slower rate, which will also be fuel for additional machine tool consumption 
uh, in 2021 in the United States. Here we're looking at Germany and its machine tool consumption in the blue line um, and its various leading indicators in the orange line. And we can see that the money supply uh, is not rapidly expanding in Europe. It's been growing at a relatively constant rate of around seven to eight percent, but no real big spikes in it like we see in the U.S. And then uh, in the first half of 2020, we've seen industrial production and capacity utilization in Germany crashing, I mean, contracting at an extremely uh, fast rate and accelerating in its contraction very rapidly. And this indicates that machine tool consumption in Germany is likely to contract in 2020 and perhaps into 2021. Uh, Japan, we've seen the money supply grow at a consistently accelerating rate since uh, the Great Recession. Uh, however, the money did not go into productive assets. Uh, while Japan was creating lots of money and printing lots of money, uh, they were using that money to boost asset prices. They've been buying bonds and uh, buying its own stock market uh, instead of increasing the productive capacity uh, of the country with that money. Uh, so instead of uh, going to further production, they've essentially financialized uh, their economy and boosting asset values. And so that combined with accelerating contractions in industrial production and capacity utilization looks like we're going to see further contraction in machine tool consumption in Japan. And then finally, we can look at Italy, which is the fifth largest machine tool consuming country. And we see that Italy's machine tool consumption contracted 16% in 2019. It is uh, contracted quite rapidly after three or four years of uh, pretty significant growth. And we see that also Italy's industrial production and capacity utilization are also crashing, much like Germany's. Of course, much of this was due uh, to Italy's uh, difficulties in battling uh, COVID-19 earlier in the year in the late spring time period. But this indicates that machine tool consumption in Italy is likely to further contract. And so what we're really seeing is that global machine tool consumption uh, was already slowing in 2020 uh, prior to the pandemic. And so we were likely to have a down year in global machine tool consumption in 2020, even without uh, the pandemic. We also saw that machine tool consumption was already shifting from uh, at least China, if not other parts of Asia, to North America and Europe prior to the pandemic. In fact, this shift in machine tool consumption and hence manufacturing around the world uh, started as far back as 2011. And I think both of these trends uh, are likely to continue, uh, at least in the short term, we're going to see further contraction in global machine tool consumption. Uh, China alone, if it continues to contract in 2020 and into 2021, uh, that will put a damper on global machine tool consumption because China is by far and away the largest machine tool consumer. But we're also likely to see the trend of uh, diversifying of supply chains geographically continue. We're also seeing populist political movements in various countries, so uh, less emphasis on global cooperation and global trade and countries becoming more protective of their economies. And also we're seeing continued increase in tensions uh, between the U.S. and China, and all of that is leading to every country uh, and producing more for their own economy and also uh, causing uh, multinational companies to spread out their supply chain so that they aren't uh, isolated in a particular area and then something happens in that country and they're unable to produce and export to other parts of the world. Uh, so in the short term, I think we're going to see global machine tool consumption possibly fall to around $75 billion in 2020. But then we're going to see it begin uh, to pick up, uh, I think, at least in North America and perhaps Europe as well. And so with that, those are my comments on my presentation.
Thank you, Steve, for your insightful presentation. And I have a couple of questions for you. That based on your presentation, you mentioned that the future market for the uh, global machine tool will mainly be in the North America and the Europe. And in addition, I understand that there are lots of uh, release packages in the state. Do you see any opportunities, for example, for Taiwan's machine tool industry manufacturers to go into the market? Or in what uh, industry, for example, the potential consumer for machine tool that it might be uh, in aerospace or auto parts or medical equipment or dyes or more the industry? Can you share some? Yeah. Yeah, that? so I think there's going to be uh, a number of industries that present opportunities for Taiwanese machine tool manufacturers. Um, one that won't be a, an opportunity, I don't think, particularly is the aerospace industry, uh, just because Boeing is struggling so much, even prior to the pandemic, Boeing was struggling. But now the global airlines are really mm -hmm. struggling. Uh, I know in the U.S., uh, air traffic uh, in the U.S. passenger traffic is about 20 to 25 percent of its normal, and that's wow. come up quite a bit over the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. So I think aerospace manufacturing will be tough on the commercial side, although we might see some growth in the defense uh, side. But in the U.S., I think you're going to see uh, some possible increases in automotive production as supply chains begin to shift and in particular with that, I think the dye mold industry in the U.S. is poised for some growth. Uh, I did another presentation uh, earlier this year looking at the dye mold industry, and there was about an $800 million gap in mold production in the United States over the last 500 years, where those molds, instead of being formerly produced in the United States, they were being imported from other countries around the world. Mm -hmm. Canada and China being the two largest countries that were shipping molds to the United States. And I think if global supply chains began to shift, we could see more of that mold production in the US. Mm -hmm. I also think the medical industry is going to be a key industry moving forward. Um, yeah, yeah. Lots, of, lots of money spent in the U.S. on healthcare and all sorts of medical sure. devices and hip replacements and knee replacements. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that, I think, will be continued to be done here. And so I think that will be another uh, good opportunity. And then really, this is hard to classify as an industry, but the job shop market, I think, is going to be very critical. Of course, job shops serve a whole variety of industries, but there are lots of small job shops in the United States. And I think that shift in supply chains will really help those supply chains. And they are going to be looking, uh, those job shops are going to be looking to invest to support the OEMs in the US. Wow, thank you. And another one is you just mentioned the supply chain. On the pandemic, the outbreak of the COVID-19 just affect the supply chain greatly and they leads to uh, the disruption. So how do you see the change of the deployment of the manufacturers production networks? So I think manufacturers are realizing that they, they're they probably best not to isolate themselves in a particular country or concentrate, I guess would be a better way of putting it, concentrating their production in a particular uh, area of the world. And I think also manufacturers are beginning to realize that there may not have been as much cost savings simply by moving production to different countries uh, than they may have originally thought. I mean, there's right certainly issues, cost to shipping, uh, intellectual property, uh, being able to work with teams around the world is a challenge and managing all of that. Uh, and certainly here in the U.S., we experienced um, just in the medical industry dealing with the pan pandemic that, yeah. boy, we didn't Americans didn't realize how much of the manufacturing had been uh, was being done in other countries. And then when we had to shift that rapidly, yes, U.S. manufacturers were able to do that. Uh, but there was a little bit of a, a scramble uh, for a little bit to try and get things going really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think you're going to see. Uh, larger companies realize that it's it's best to manufacture um, their products in the region that they're going to sell them. So if we plan on selling in Asia, we should be manufacturing in Asia. And if, we be, if we're planning on selling in North America, we should manufacture 
in North America and the same for Europe. And I think com uh, companies are coming more and more to that realization. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, Steve, for your presentation, for your time talking with us and the sharing that I enjoy your talk a lot. And I hope our audience enjoy your talk a lot as much as, as, much as I do. So coming up, we will have more salons to uh, talk to the representative from uh, the machine to associations from like uh, Russia, Turkey, and the States, and India and Thailand. So please stay tuned. Thank you, Steve. I'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.